Los Angeles City Council member for the 3rd District, Bob Blumenfield, and his wife, Kathy Blumenfield. Los Angeles City Council member for the 4th District, David Rue, and his sister, Esther Rue. Los Angeles City Council member for the 5th District, Paul Koretz, and his wife, Gail Koretz. Los Angeles City Council member for the 6th District, Nori Martinez, her husband Gerardo Guzman, and their daughter Isabel. Los Angeles City Council member for the 7th District, Monica Rodriguez, and her husband, Raul Fontanil. Los Angeles City Council member for the 8th District, Marquise Harris Dawson, and his wife, Carrie Harris Dawson. Los Angeles City Council member for the 9th District, Curran Price, and his wife, Del Richardson Price. Los Angeles City Council President Herb Wesson and his wife, Fabian Wesson.
Los Angeles City Council member for the 11th District, Mike Bonin, and his husband, Sean Arian. Los Angeles City Council member for the 12th District, Mitch Englander, and his wife, Jane Englander. Los Angeles City Council member for the 13th District, Mitch O'Farrell, and his partner, George Brockman. Los Angeles City Council member for the 14th District, Jose Huizar, and his wife, Rochelle Rios Huizar. Los Angeles City Council member for the 15th District, Joe Buscaino, and his wife, Jay Buscaino. Los Angeles City Controller, Ron Galperin, and his husband, Rabbi Zachary Shapiro. Los Angeles City Attorney Mike Fuhr and his wife, Gail Fuhr. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Los Angeles Mayor Eric Garcetti and First Lady Amy Elaine Wakeland.
And as we get set for the Ladies color and guard gentlemen, please rise and remain standing for the advancement and presentation of the colors by the United States Navy. More time, more. Forward, more. More time, more. Forward, more. More time, more. Ready. Please welcome opera singer Angel Blue to sing our national anthem. So 
Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rabbi Sharon Brouse, who will give tonight's invocation. Elected and civic leaders, people of the city of Los Angeles, I am deeply honored to offer these words of invocation to open this sacred assembly. We stand today in Los Angeles, the city of angels, a city that calls every day upon the better angels of our nature. Abraham Lincoln birthed that image in his first inaugural address, speaking to a nation that stood in social and political crisis. And today, 156 years later, the soul of our nation is again in crisis. Today, a polarized political culture is dragging our country into a black hole of hostility and indecency. But today, we also know that the better angels, our shared dreams, our deepest commitments, can still reawaken the mystic chords of memory across this nation. We know this because our better angels guide us every day across this city. As they did when I, a Jew, walked into a mosque a few months ago and heard a Muslim community leader address a room full of Catholic Latinos. Our message to the immigrant community, he said, is that you are safe here. We will wrap our arms of love and protection around you. In that mosque, I saw in this city the deepest and purest and greatest antidote to the culture of intolerance, fear, and hatred that is so prevalent today, and that is love. I saw faith manifesting as brotherhood and sisterhood, as empathy and solidarity. People love this city, Los Angeles, because of our palm trees and our vistas, because the fingerprint of God is imprinted in our majestic beaches and our mountains, because almost every day of the year is 78 and sunny. But I love the city of Los Angeles because it is a microcosm of the rich and beautiful tapestry of America. To live in this city is to be reminded every day that we are strengthened and sustained by our diversity. I love Los Angeles because as our country has descended into demagoguery and disdain, our mayor and our city leaders have turned this city into a holy hotspot, an oasis of love and justice, a place where Jews and Christians and Muslims and Sikhs and Buddhists and Hindus and Catholics and atheists stand together against hate crimes, form holy alliance to fight homelessness and combat racism, work side by side to strengthen and support our immigrant communities, declare our commitment to protecting one another and our fragile planet. This is a city built not at the intersection of the 10, the 110, and the 101, but at the intersection of hope, faith, and love. Los Angeles remains a city with a massive gap between rich and poor, a city that struggles with painful racial and ethnic fault lines, with violence and needless human suffering and really bad traffic, but it is also a city where reconciliation and healing are possible. A city whose leaders are clear-eyed about the challenges, who know that we are not there yet, and who are not going to give up until we get there together. This is a city built on dreams, and fueled by hope, the single greatest response to today's politics of pessimism and culture of cruelty. Holy One, protect and strengthen our mayor, who wears the clothes of a politician but has the heart of a prophet. Blessed One, remind us all, in a time of moral crisis, we are called not to be comfortable but to be awake to engage in willful opposition and, and restless agitation, to create sanctuaries that will drive a spoke through the wheels of injustice, to step into the fray, using all of the spiritual and political and intellectual resources that we possess to fight 
for one another. Help us remember that this is a city not only of creative possibility, but of moral fortitude. God bless the inhabitants of this city with holy chutzpah as we rise up against the spiritual anemia and moral decay of our nation, as we stubbornly work toward a vision of liberty, justice, and dignity for all. Source of life, lift up our better angels. Remind us to keep looking one another in the eye, to keep seeing one another, to wrap our tender arms of love and protection around one another. Shabbat Shalom, may this day of holiness bring peace to our city and to our country. And let us say, Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Los Angeles City Clerk Holly L. Walcott to administer the oath of office to the newly elected and re-elected members of the Los Angeles City Council. I solemnly swear, solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the State of California, and the Charter of the City of Los Angeles, and that I will faithfully just discharge the duties of the Office of Council Member, please state your district, according to the best of my ability. According to the best of my abilities. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Council President Herb Wesson. Yeah, don't stop. Hello, El in fact, no. Does anybody know? if they have cable in the Lincoln bedroom? Eric. You may have to get another running mate, no cable. City employees write my jokes. You can give me a mercy laugh. Hello, LA. Do me a favor and give the other members of the council another Round of applause. <laughs> On behalf of the Los Angeles City Council, we want to thank Mayor Eric Garcetti for partnering with us. Thank the mayor for four extraordinary years of many successes. Now, we know that there's still a lot of work to do, 
But what we have demonstrated is what can be done when there is a true partnership in government. And the mayor and I often chat about this relationship between the council and the mayor being one of the, if not the best relationship in the history of this city. We put the people first here. And we recognize that as LA, that the winds in this country blow from the west to the east. And we have a responsibility to the rest of this country. And we need to set an example for the White House. And that Los Angeles needs to be a beacon of hope. And we need the rest of the world to know that here in LA, we judge people based on their deeds and their actions and not on the color of their skin. That we don't care what religion you practice in LA. That we don't care who you love or how you love. The only thing that's important to us is that you love. We are a city, when we walk out into a crowd and that crowd is not diverse, we think something's wrong. We are a city where our police department is not directed to ask folk for papers. In LA, everybody's got papers. We got the LA Times, the Daily News, we got papers. In LA, we all want the same thing, to live a better life than our parents so that maybe our children can live a better life than us. Today, we celebrate a city going in the right direction. That's why every incumbent in the city of LA was reelected. That's why our great mayor, Eric Garcetti, was elected with 81% of the vote. The people in this city did not send us to City Hall to manage the city. They sent us to lead. God bless LA. God bless Mayor Eric Garcetti. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome George Takei to the stage. Hello, I'm George Takei. I, back, I got back just a little bit uh, before... Uh, this, the, the beginning of this week from a five month stay in New York City and I am so glad to be home. I love LA. And it is a true honor to be with all of you here this evening. Los Angeles is in my, is in my blood. It's where I was born. It's where I Pine to be when my family and I were imprisoned during the Second World War in American concentration camps. It's where I learned to speak Spanish, running the streets of Boyle Heights with friends like Honorato, Pelon, and Danny. And while we are here today to celebrate these city officials, might I remind you that I was senior board president at Los Angeles High School. And in the summer of 1960, almost exactly 57 years ago, today I 
had just graduated from UCLA when, when a young man from Massachusetts came to Los Angeles to accept the party's call to stand for the nation's highest office. I was there when he spoke to a massive gathering in the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum. People all across America heard his words that day, but there was a special resonance for us here in LA. And it's not just because he was here, but because he captured the spirit that infects us as Angelinos. As we gather here to install our city council members, our controller, our city attorney, and our mayor into their new terms of service, I think the following excerpts of what President Kennedy said back then resonates perhaps even more so today in this dynamic, innovative, diverse, and exceptional place we call home. This is what President Kennedy said. I stand tonight facing west on what was once the last frontier from the land that stretches 3,000 miles behind me, the pioneers of old gave up their safety, their comfort, and sometimes their lives to build a new world here in the West. They were not the captives of their own doubts, the prisoners of their own price tags. Their motto was not every man for himself, but all for the common good. They were determined to make the new world strong and free, to overcome its hazards and its hard hardships, to conquer the enemies that threaten from without and within. Today, some would say that those struggles are all over, that all the horizons have been explored, that all the battles have been won, that there is no longer an American frontier. But I trust that no one in this vast assemblage will agree with those sentiments. For the problems are not all solved, and the battles are not all won. And we stand today on the edge of a new frontier, a frontier of unknown opportunities and perils, a frontier of unfulfilled hopes and threats. I tell you, the new frontier is here whether we seek it or not. Beyond that frontier are uncharted areas of science and space, unsolved problems of peace and war, unconquered pockets of ignorance and prejudice, unanswered questions of poverty and surplus. It would be easy to shrink back from the frontier to look at the e safe mediocrity of the past, to be lulled by good intentions and high rhetoric. But I believe the time demands new invention, new innovation, imagination, decision. I am asking each of you to be pioneers on that new frontier. My call is to the young in heart, regardless of age, to all who respond to the scriptural call, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Those are the words spoken by President John F. Kennedy 57 years ago in the summer of 1960. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Rabia Ahmadi to administer the oath of office to Los Angeles City Controller Ron Galperin.
dear uh, Ron Galprin, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Ron Shalom Galprin, do solemnly swear. I, Ron Shalom Galprin, solemnly swear. That I that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California and the Charter of the City of Los Angeles. That I will support the Constitution of the United States of America, the Constitution of the State of California, and the Charter of the City of Los Angeles. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of the city controller according to the best of my abilities. And that I will faithfully execute the duties of city controller to the best of my abilities. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. I wish you more success. Thank you, and good evening, Los Angeles! I am honored and humbled to be here with you and to join our great Mayor Eric Garcetti, City Attorney Mike Fuhr, Council President Herb Wesson, and our new and continuing Council members. Give them a hand! Thank you to my beloved husband of nearly 20 years, my very own personal rabbi and partner in life, Zach Shapiro. And thank you, Rabia Ahmadi, for doing the honor of swearing me in. Last year, Rabia became a refugee when she fled her native Afghanistan, where she had studied economics at the University of Kabul. Today, Rabia and her beautiful family have made their home in Tarzana, so please join me in welcoming them to America and to Los Angeles. <laughs> welcoming Rabia is my way of saying thank you. For it was 74 years ago when my father escaped the Holocaust from Romania. He traveled an arduous journey to Israel and eventually to America. And along this odyssey, he was a refugee. And he was welcomed of, in all places, Aleppo, Syria. Imagine my father survived, and I'm here, thanks to the same people who find themselves refugees today. Now when our democratic values are being tested daily, we must remember that this nation, this city of angels, was built on welcoming and on encouraging the dreams of immigrants like Rabia and like my mother of blessed memory and like my father who just turned 96. It's their aspirations that propel me. And here in LA, we aspire to embrace and celebrate diversity and a spirit of innovation and forward thinking. Now, LA's controller, I may not control everything. I'm working on it. But it's my privilege and my job to make government work for you. And I'm guided by three principles, transparency, trust, and transformation. First, transparency. We launched the most extensive and forward-thinking data initiative in the nation. Now everyone can check out every single dollar that we spend in the city of LA, every item that we buy, the details of every city account. And I'm proud to say that that helped make us number one digital city. Next, trust. It is vital that government earn people's trust. I've sought to do so by offering unvarnished reviews of how our city spends money by pioneering dashboards and mapping tools, by working to better utilize the vast assets and the incredible dedicated workforce of this city, including my wonderful staff. And transformation, oh, I hear them calling it out. And transformation, as the first neighborhood council member elected citywide and with experience in and out of city government, it's my mission not just to improve City Hall. 
It's my mission to transform it. And that's by partnering with the tech community, by demanding accountability, by delivering meaningful results. The task ahead is to build on these three pillars of transparency, of trust, and of transformation. I'm deeply grateful to wake up every morning and do a job that I absolutely love to do. And I'm committed to push the envelope and to build a city where everyone is welcome and has a home. Thank you for the trust you have placed in me. I hope to continue to do you proud and to make government work for you as we welcome and shape the future together. Thank you so much, Los Angeles. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome California Attorney General Javier Becerra to administer the oath of office to Los Angeles City Attorney Mike Fuhr. As you prepare, to raise your sword for liberty and your shield for justice, let me ask you to raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Michael Nelson Fuhr. I, Michael Nelson Fuhr. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of California. And the Constitution of the State of California and the charter of the city of Los Angeles and the charter of the city of Los Angeles and that I will faithfully discharge and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the office of the, the city attorney the duties of the office of the city attorney according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability congratulations thank you Javier I want to begin by congratulating our mayor, our city controller, all our city council members, and thanking my friend Javier, not only for administering the oath, but for standing up for California values on everything from protecting the environment to assuring our nation is welcoming to all. And I, I want to thank my wife, Gail, for a thousand things, including uh, letting me kiss her in front of 2,500 people. There's, there's a long distance between today and when I stood before you four years ago. Four years ago, my dad was with us. He survived a Nazi prison camp and educated kids for 60 years. My dad taught me to pursue the most important work in the world, really mattering in the lives of other people. Four years ago, my youngest, brave, and talented brother, Steve, was with us. Life is so short. We have to burn brightly. But of course, I'm pleased by who is here. My kids, Aaron and Danielle, my mom, Stella, our city attorney family, and all our friends. Four years ago, I pledged to focus on neighborhoods. I promised to double our neighborhood prosecutor program in which we fixed the most dangerous and difficult problems in people's neighborhoods. We've nearly tripled it. I said we'd address school safety. We created a neighborhood school safety program that's helping dozens of schools. We built a neighborhood justice program where volunteers in neighborhoods where crimes are committed direct offenders to help the community and give back, to help the victim, and to receive services so they don't reoffend again, like job training. And it's working because nationally, criminals reoffend at a rate of more than 50%, but in neighborhood justice, it's less than five. Four years ago, four years ago, I promised to protect all Angelinos. And you've seen us help consumers again and again, as with our successful lawsuit against Wells Fargo over fake accounts. You've seen us go after one hospital after another to put a stop to the dumping of homeless patients on our streets. 
and you've seen us sue employers whom we allege are stealing the wages of low-income workers. And we're fighting for a cleaner environment. We challenged an oil facility near USC where neighbors were complaining about nosebleeds and headaches for years. And we sued the gas company over the Porter Ranch gas leak. We are solving major problems here at home and having an impact nationally. The American Bar Association next month will present its award, the top award in the nation, to a public law office. Next month, that award goes to our office. So what's next? What's next at town hall meetings across our city? I've heard you ask for more than great lawyering. You've asked for leadership. And nowhere will that be more evident than on the issue of homelessness. We just won a major state grant to deploy mobile teams on the streets of our city to intervene with homeless people and low-level offenders before they even enter the justice system. We're conducting clinics throughout Los Angeles to connect homeless people to the programs they need to turn their lives around and get rid of citations and fines that prevent them from getting a house or a job. We are in the forefront of an effort to convert motels into homeless housing. And I am going to neighborhood leaders throughout our city to inspire them to be part of the solution by supporting the location of housing and services in neighborhoods throughout Los Angeles, because that's what we need to lift everybody out of homelessness. And you will see us step in as the federal government is retreating from protecting civil rights and the environment and consumers. I never thought four years ago we'd be in so many battles with Washington. The Saturday after the Muslim travel ban was put into effect, I went to LAX to try to secure the release of the detainees. I had to go. It felt like our country was slipping away. The next morning, Sunday at 9 a.m., lawyers throughout my office were taking action and were part of lawsuits across the country to put a permanent stop to the travel ban. And here in Los Angeles, and here in Los Angeles, we are helping define how we safeguard immigrants' rights and protect taxpayer dollars under threat from Washington. At age 12, my grandma Ethel left her little village in Russia that was ravaged by the pogroms to come to America. Her boat was stopped in Cuba because our government was restricting Jewish immigration to the United States. We know what it feels like when a nation locks its doors to you because of your religion. And so Thursday of last week, again, I was at LAX with immigrant advocates to assure basic rights are protected. I don't know when the next crisis is going to emerge, but I know this. Our office will be there to protect the values and the people of Los Angeles, and we, we are just getting started. Thanks very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome members of the Los Angeles Master Chorale, conducted by Jenny Wong.
gentlemen, please welcome the First Lady of Los Angeles, Amy Elaine Wakeland. so much for being here. My husband, your 42nd mayor, comes from a family of strong, independent-minded women. His great-grandmother, Guadalupe Delgado Garcia, crossed the U.S.-Mexican border with her only child in her arms and no other family to help her fleeing war. That child, Eric's grandfather, Salvador, later earned his U.S. citizenship by wearing this country's uniform. Eric's paternal grandmother, Juanita Iberi Garcetti, who married Salvador, got up at 4 a.m. each morning to help provide for her family as a meatpacker. Eric's maternal grandmother was a public school teacher. She answered the call to public service during President Johnson's War on Poverty and left friends and family behind to join the teacher corps in Milwaukee when she was in her 50s. Julia was a trained musician who helped inspire Eric's passion for music. And of course, there is Eric's mother, Suki Garcetti. She became a musician like her mother and served for 25 years as a foundation executive. 
More than anyone, Suki Garcetti is responsible for Eric's strong moral compass and his love for this city and its beautiful diversity. Suki raised Eric to value inclusivity. She instilled in him his deep commitment to public service. She encouraged him to learn about and travel to new places. She exposed him to the histories, cultures, and customs that opened his eyes not just to Los Angeles, but to the world that is reflected in all of the faces of LA. She welcomed people from all over our city and throughout the world into her home as Eric was growing up. And in her home, Suki respected and blended her family traditions with the traditions of her husband's family. She still cooks Grandma Nita's menudo at the holidays. Over the course of her career, Suki Garcetti fought for a free and open press. She fought for a woman's right to choose. And above all, she raised her children to be good people, to focus on making right choices rather than easy choices. I am proud to call her my mother-in-law as much as I am proud to be married to the man who she taught to administer the oath of office to your 42nd mayor, please welcome Suki Garcetti. swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Constitution of the State of California, and the Charter of the City of Los Angeles, and the Charter of the City of Los Angeles, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the Office of Mayor and according to the best discharge of the duties of the Office of Mayor according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you first to my dear wife, Amy, and our beloved daughter, Maya. To my mother, who with my father has made me the man that I am today, who I used to visit in this building when I was a little boy. The natural world marks the passage of time with the rise of the sun and the turn of the seasons. On top of that natural world sits our human world of the city and of our democracy. That world makes its own clocks and its own calendars, elections that mark and limit time, terms of office that wind the watch of days that we make together. Most days of most weeks, we toil away inside this hall behind me. We count our progress in tallied votes and measured gains. We mark our plans by the week and by the month. But the gardener takes a longer view at the start of the year than in the days of the harvest. So let us, too, set our eyes on a farther horizon. Today, we stand outside the hall, where we can see a great deal more. We can see our city. And the tower above us bears the words of thinkers who walk these city streets long before we gathered here on ours. So today, let us imagine farther into our future. The sun over our gathering shines its light on a tapestry whose colors we still have to count. So today, let us take them all in. In the time that Los Angeles has been a city, in the state of California, in these United States of America, 
42 mayors have marked 81 terms in office. Four years ago, we stood here on a sweltering day to witness the changing of the Guard. I had not come to a new place, but you had entrusted me with a new role. And I swore a humble oath to serve, to listen, to lead. Four years ago, this tower stood just as tall, but this city did not. We were crawling out of an economic downturn that left our basic city services gutted, our morale sapped, our aspirations tempered. But we refused to be modest that day. We refused to be divided that day. That day, we shared a vision that we could renew our faith in City Hall together. We said we would guide our economy into recovery. And I swore that we would put that recovery to work for all of us. I ask for your patience and your faith that we would knit back together the bones of our city, that we would fix our broken streets and failing sewers, modernize our obsolete networks and aging ways, that we would judge our success by the promotion of the good life, not by the promotion of our own bureaucracy. We got things done. This city is changing. It hasn't happened overnight, but it is happening, and slowly and surely, the light gets in. We changed the culture of City Hall, got back to work, one street tree, one sidewalk, one pothole at a time. And we changed the culture in City Hall. For the first time, three citywide elected officials and 15 council members set aside the stale, unending competition for the day's headlines. Instead, we sought the levers where powers of each of us, exercised with prudence and passion, could double the efforts of the others, all in the service of a freer, safer, prouder city. You see, we found by working together, we could do more to write and mend the laws and to care for our neighborhoods than ever before. With that spirit, we promoted the health of an entire region as we gave our attention to every block. When we let slide that zero-sum race for credit, we won a bounty of shared progress. Today, our children and their neighborhoods have two promise zones and record graduation rates. Today, we see in this great city aerospace and, in and entertainment industries revive and ripple out through our economy, easing neighborhoods on families off of fear's edge and into shared hope. You, the voters, passed one of the largest initiatives to help the homeless, and before two seasons turned, you did it again. You invested in Measure M, the most ambitious municipal initiative in this country by a railroad mile. And today, we look at this city with more potential, more ambition, more unity than we did four years ago. And it's a damn good thing because now it's time to draw on every drop of that potential, every bit of that ambition, every fiber of that unity. Crime remains a challenge. So does moving through our city. Even as we rise to face it, homelessness rises faster. Every tent and blanket calling on our deepest reserves of courage, creativity, and compassion. Behind that harrowing scene on our streets, our housing crisis grows. Climbing rents warn us of a city without a middle, the rich and the poor drifting apart as if split by an earthquake whose early warnings could not have been any louder. We refuse to be caught flat-footed. It's not who we are as Angelinos. For more than two centuries, this place, these streets, this land, these hills, this sky has welcomed our boldest plans. Every Angelino generation that has stood here before us to rise up against the bonds that narrowed their ambitions. They came by land bridge. They came by wagon carts. They left behind slavery's chains and the ache of famine. They took a week-long journey by schooner from San Francisco and then an all-day dusty cart ride up from San Pedro Bay. And they stood here on Calle Primavera, Spring Street, 
They could survey the whole Pueblo from here, and they knew that their story was not finished. They built the railroad. They dredged the port. They brought water from the mountains, laid the tracks of our streetcars. After the Second World War, they housed an army of homeless veterans encamped in Westlake Park. They built the freeways, and they raised a skyline that continues to grow today. You see, the work of a city is not the same as the work of a nation. The nation, first and last, is a dream to bind a vast, unruly land. First and last, the city is one physical space. Built strong enough, it will bring to fruition a great many of our dreams. The work of solving our problems is the work of building our city. Los Angeles, we are builders. And we have begun that work, and we mean to keep at it. A holiday visitor who leaves town tomorrow and returns the next time that we gather to change the hands of government will return and arrive at a city transformed. She'll take the metro line from the airport up the Crenshaw line into the heart of town. She'll see a modernized convention center cross a brand new Sixth Street bridge over a revitalized river. She'll see the Lucas Museum, one of the greatest museum gifts in the history of this country. But what she doesn't see will be just as real. What lies between the monuments and inside our neighborhoods? Our guest will land in a city that produces affordable housing at twice the rate we do it today. She'll breathe cleaner air, drink water from land just beneath her feet. She'll pass by parks and schools where kids play sports without worrying what uniforms cost their families as Los Angeles becomes the healthiest city in America. She'll catch glimpses of biotech campuses racing towards cures for diseases once thought incurable. She might miss that the minimum wage has risen to $15 an hour, that the first two years of college are free, that every young man and woman who wants a summer job has one. And she might not know that she herself is a record, 50 million annual visitors, a number that powers our industries and strengthens our middle class. Our traveler may not see all the changes, but she will feel them as she walks through a city with more dignity and more pride than we even know today. Yet those plans of the museum, of the bridge, of the summer jobs and the higher wages are all drawn up. Their vistas lie within sight of where we stand today. So I ask you, Los Angeles, what chapter will we write tomorrow? The page is not blank. The city has already begun to write that chapter. You started writing it when you said yes in record numbers to building homes for the homeless. You started it. You started writing it when you said yes in record numbers to stretching our metro across the county. You started writing it when you said yes to calling forth a city reborn. You see, if democracy makes its own time, then the local elections of November and March rang chimes for a new age, an age demanding that we listen and demanding that we lead, an age announcing a growing, a vital, and most of all, a reconnected city. We spent four years going back to the basics because we owed it to ourselves and to our future. We spent four years going back to the basics so that tomorrow we could build on those basics. We could build the future out of the pieces that we already have in front of us here tonight. So we could connect the city, connect its people, connect its future. You see, we fought for the Lucas Museum not just to win the biggest cultural prize in the nation, but to unlock the imagination of generations of young Angelinos and to inspire us to finally return arts education to every school in Los Angeles. We fight for the Olympics not just to watch its torch blaze a third trail through our city, but because we know that torch will call our children out of their homes and into our parks and our playfields. We know that universal access to sports will make LA the healthiest city in America, and we know that playing a sport may be the difference between a dropout form and a diploma in our children's hands. We fought to pass Measure M, not just because we're all stuck in traffic, but because we want the working men and women who lay those tracks and dig those tunnels to map the route 
to a vibrant middle class. We fight to get the tents packed up from the underpass, not just to clean our streets or remove them from our sight, but because we want every unhoused Angelino to have a home where they are healthy and safe and where they can pursue their dreams. Because every person living on the, our streets, they have dreams too. And if that means new laws or reforming the laws that we have so that we can build the homes that this city needs, let us start that work today. If you were born here, if you were drawn here, if you came from down the block or across the sea, I want you to have a stake in this, your Los Angeles. I want you to sign the papers on your first home, to know the joy of scratching every inch your children grow into the paint on the kitchen doorway. And I want you to know that in their time, that your children, because of our work, they will be able to make this city their home too. Look around for a moment and breathe this moment, this city in. Its people, its wealth, our will, the space is laid out in front of us. And my friends, the time is now. The future always comes early to Los Angeles. Walk a block and take a train to the launching pad of a voyage to Mars or the port of call for renewed undersea exploration. Go down to Hollywood and be present for the creation of the greatest stories in the universe, whether they're projected on a screen or they immerse you in their reality. We know, we've known, the future is already here. In the words of writer William Gibson, it's just unevenly distributed. That's on us. We must decide whether our whole city will own its share of that future or whether we will watch it pass us by while a greater number watches from behind a glass. We decide here, now, and walking forward whether that future will be offered to one in a million with a lottery ticket or whether every child growing up here will know that it is her birthright. We must connect. We must succeed. At sustaining middle class jobs, at strengthening our schools, at protecting our environment while growing our economy. Because right now, it's on us to show the way. You see, we are a united city in a divided country. A country that for centuries has stood for something. It has stood for freedom. It has stood for leadership. It has stood for bold plans and great accomplishments. And now, at this hour, we see our nation and its leaders shrink from those values we once proclaimed. So Los Angeles, port of call, sanctuary, home of invention, most American of cities must pick up these most American of ideas where they lie, and we must lead the world for those who need it. And who better but you, us? Who better than this impossible city in this improbable place, this city with its shaking bedrock, with its downtown planted miles from its coast, a city that wasn't supposed to happen, the railroad's afterthought, dredging its port, drawing its water. Today we hear our nation's leaders tell us that cities like this should not work, that we should fear the immigrant, but watch us thrive in our great diversity. They tell us cities like this shed jobs when they protect the environment, but watch our working people rise as we clean our air. We stand as a city that respects each other, that protects each other. And here we carry forward the legacy of Abraham Lincoln and Martin Luther King, of Emma Lazarus and Cesar Chavez, of John Muir and Rachel Carson. And they call upon us to protect this land and this air and this sea and this planet and our people. And we are ready to answer that call because we are embracing our leadership in the world while giving our attention to every city block. There is no line to be drawn between fixing the cracks in the pavement and lifting our heads to the heavens. They are one and the same. There is not a night that I don't go to sleep without thinking about the hopes and dreams of the four million people with whom I share this city. 
and there's not a day I wake without thinking of you, my four million neighbors. Of the natives, of the new arrivals, of my brothers and sisters sleeping in a tent down the street, my friends and neighbors hoping that tomorrow they'll hold on to what they've got in Wilmington or Panorama City. I think of children riding bicycles through the streets of Koreatown or the hills of El Sereno, down the blocks of South LA or the streets of the valley where I grew up. At a moment when this world tells too many of them too soon that what it has in store for them are boundaries and limitations. So I go to sleep each night with a prayer and a plan that tomorrow with our courage and conviction, together we will build a city that throws open every door that ever shut on a hope and on a dream. I stand here today on the strength of your faith in my work, of your vote for that work. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you and to serve this city of angels. You granted me one set of seasons to start that work, and together we poured an unshakable foundation. You honored me with another turn of seasons to continue that work. And in the time we have, I promise, we will not let that foundation sit bare. I promise, we will build on it. Build a united and connected city. A united city with our eyes set as high as the mountains, with our gaze turned to the Pacific horizon. A connected city with our bonds so strong that as we climb, we let none of us fall. We might not get there overnight, but we will get there one day. And as we go, we'll shine our beacon from the highest tower in this city. In Los Angeles, we may be an imperfect paradise, but we are still here for every seeker of tolerance, every immigrant fleeing war, every native and new arrival who will put her shoulder to the wheel and help perfect this paradise and this land. There are so many names that I wear proudly. Husband, father, son, American, Californian, mayor. But there's no name I wear quite like Angelino. <laughs> On this turning of time, in this place right here, our future and our world's future will be written by us right here. Our time is now, Angelinos. Let's go write it. Thank you so much.
marching band. The mayor and the first lady want to thank you for being here today. This is your announcer, Cedaring Fox. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. 